Hello guys, welcome back to my channel DP Design and in this video we are going to learn how to perform a torsor rigidity simulation on the formula student frame. So this is a video dedicated to formula student only for those who are willing to learn how to perform a basic FEA study or how to perform a simulation on the uh, formula student parts. So this video is only dedicated to formula student for now. Now, as you can see, we have one model, which is the formula student frame over here. Also, we have created the our main sections, the bulkhead using the SOLIDWORKS elements. So these are properly cut and trimmed. There is no solid interaction between them for doing the perf uh, performing the uh, FEA simulation you need to check every member that every member for the solid interaction if it is in uh, interaction of uh, or overlapping the bodies then your result will not come out that much accurate so this thing you have to keep in mind before moving on to the FEA simulation FEA study now in this video we are going to talk about the torsional rigidity what it is and we must know fundamental of it before performing the simulation so let's go to our tab which is explaining how it, it is going to be performed now as you can see our tr is equal to torque load upon angular deflection so our torque load around is can be measured in newton meter and angular deflection always measure in radian not in a degrees not in a mm it is measured in a radian i will tell you how to calculate uh, this in the radian now as you can see these are our wish bones uh, so this is the simplified geometry but for more accurate result, what you can do, you can just create your knuckle points, a solid member only, solid beam you can uh, select and then connect it to the upper wishbone to your this frame point, frame upper wishbone point and then connect it to this lower point. Do the same on the right side as well and this is symmetry also, you can cut out the model for uh, simplifying the geometry. Now, the this is our tire, yeah. So as you can see, this is our tire and this is our uh, front axle axis. And this will be the center line and this line is coinciding at this point. So it will be our rotational point. So now, you must apply the forces on this body which is our this knuckle and right knuckle so you have to apply the force to measure the torsional rigidity this is downward and this force should be upward so it will give moment like this some something right so what it will give it will give the uh, deflection the angular deflection you want in mm only in uh, post processing so we have to convert it, it in a radian so what you can do you can just take out the value whatever you have measured let's say you have get you are getting the 3.8 mm so divide by you have to measure the distance from the wherever your coordinate system is there so you can measure the rotational point and let's say it is a 580 so you can divide your 580 then you will get the value of your angular deflection in radian so this is how you can calculate for the deflection measurement and also for the torque as you know force into distance so this will be our force and you can measure the distance and you can uh, find the torque load and then you can input the value so this is our input value uh, you can say it, uh, as a boundary condition or loading condition and this will be our post processing result that's why we are doing FEA study to find the angular deflection 
and this will be our fixed area which is the engine portion or you can say spool portion is there spool or differential whatever you can think right so this four these eight points are fixed for now so this is our basic understanding you can write down in your notebook before uh, moving on to the FES study so these points you can note down before the simulation now I will erase this and I have created one study so it won't take take a long long time to simulate and also I can show you what is happening actually so I have created one study that is a static study I will not go for a nonlinear study because there is no complex geometry or large deformation or not any much contract interaction is there so I will go for the basic FPS study now we have this joint groups are already created through the weldments right so as you can see there are some joints are there created by itself so this should be yeah perfect this is good so you can edit the joint type and also you can add uh, your points as well in the component interaction we don't have to select anything we just keep it bonded as it is because there is no much uh, parts are there only one part is there not assembly that's why we don't focus on this part whenever assembly comes or whenever we apply uh, the suspension system or braking system is there dynamic simulation we are going to perform in the next videos so in that we will focus on the connection or uh, body interaction right now these are our fixed point we have selected so you can select the joints over there so how you can do you can just go to the fixture advisor and fix geometry then you can select whatever you want to select you can select also beams but this will be very accurate so what you can do you can just go to joints and then you you are you have the authority to select this as you can see this is this green symbol so i will make it a bigger right so it is locked in three direction so this is how you can select your fixtures some students are uh, fixing this point as well i have seen many simulations where many students are fixing or uh, considering this main roll hoop but that is not correct actually now we have to apply the force over here as you can see this is splitted area over here this is splitted over area over here this is the cut list has been created by Wilmins. as you can see our first force has been given in downward direction which is a thousand newton this is not the actual value we are just uh, giving it for how to perform the simulation you can calculate by yourself for the accurate results for uh, this uh, force value by the force value right and this is in a upper direction so what it will do it will something go like this and go like this oh i will make the shadow off for now yeah so we have given a force one m force two that is down one and up one direction then we will check our meshing is correct or not yeah it is in a beams okay also you can define where your results or or uh, stress is higher so you can define your mesh this is course mesh for doing a quick study for the tr right so how you can qualify your fine mesh so it will delete my result and it will take some time so i will not go for another mesh now if you run the results from here you can select a run the study and if you run the result your frame will bend like this 
right? Now you can select the true scale. Okay, now we can check. Also, you can select the torsional moment. Yeah, this is the torsional moment, and I will go to the displacement plot because that is much more important for me to count. So this is my angular deflection has been created, which is a 1.77 into 10 to 1. So I will simply, you can also simplify it by a scientific two floating. Yeah. So you can select a decimal place as well. And you can show minimum, maximum deformation. So this is about 17 mm by this force. Right, the torque has been applied. This is our value, which is which is the U resultant 1.77 mm. Accordingly, you can just input over here 117 uh, and applied your distance between the starting point and your which one point, right? Which one middle point? So that distance will come out over here something like x and you will get it in a radian then you have applied the torque will come out here your value here and you will get your torsional rigidity value so this is how you can now uh, perform the simulation also you can check the stresses if it it is uh, going over the yield limit or not so that's what you can create over here i will select for now, normal stress is oh, this type of stresses you can take out from the post processing. Okay, these are my max principal stresses, but I have not to focus for now. Okay, so if you want to make like if I do axial, my axial stress. Also, you can go to the deformation where user defined and 50 times more. So, as you can see, where the deformation is higher, you can see actually by giving the deformation scale higher, right? So, this is how you can perform a torsion reality simulation. You can uh, perform on your chassis and see how much value is coming. And in the future video, we will go much deep into that with the assembly only. We will assemble the knuckle, we will assemble the wishbones and suspension strut. Everything will be assembled and we will perform a dynamic simulation on that, which you can call as a MBD. And also we will show you how to export the result from SOLIDWORKS to MSC Adams directly. There is no extra processing you have to turn to get it into the Adams. So this is all for the video. You can support us by subscribe, subscribing our channel and like this video, share this video. Keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing. Thank you so much.